The next one I want to talk about is diagnostics. As we heard about with Gunnar last week, it's often very hard to know when a doctor sees a patient, do you have a bacterial infection and is it resistant? And so they're using uh, antibiotics best, uh, based on their best guess as to what they should do. And as you know by now, this can take time. It can take days to find out whether or not you have a bacterial infection and a resistant bacterial infection in particular. And so what a number of groups are doing are looking for in vitro methods. That means not growing the bacteria necessarily, but looking for things that it, you can measure quickly. Ideally, in about half an hour at the doctor's office. That's the uh, dream. So we want a diagnostic test. The other reason we buy a diagnostic test is that, so for example, if there's an old antibiotic that isn't used much because there's a lot of resistance, that doesn't mean your infection isn't sensitive to that antibiotic. Let's say 90% are resistant, but 10% aren't. And so for that 10%, it would be nice if we could use that old antibiotic in those patients. And so another advantage of having a fast diagnostic test is that uh, you could use an older antibiotic instead of fancier new antibiotics. For example, urinary tract infections. This is such a common uh, infection that this is the focus of a lot of research right now. And I'm going to give you two examples of this. Three examples of this. First of all, in, here locally at Gothenburg, uh, there are people looking to be able to use sequencing, DNA sequencing, to very quickly identify what bacteria and what resistance is. Right now, they can't do it in 30 minutes, but that is one of their aims. Others are looking at the proteome, and that means looking at the proteins expressed. So if you could measure the proteins, there are certain proteins only in some bacteria, not in others. And there are some proteins associated with resistance that you could measure. And a company here has been formed around this idea called 1928 Diagnostics. Another approach taken by a group in Uppsala, they formed a company called Astrigo Technology. They, they proposed, okay, yeah, we can't wait two days or a day, however long, to grow the bacteria. But we don't really need to wait two days because we can use microscopy to look at the bacteria growing and can see them grow very quickly, especially in the case of urinary tract infections that are usually caused by E. coli. E. coli can divide every 20 minutes. So if you could watch them, you could actually do things much faster. So what they've done is they've created a device where you have a sample, let's say a urine sample, that you put in this microfluidic chip. And bacteria in the sample are caught in these traps. So you flood this, you get on average one bacteria per lane on here. And you're going to have liquid flowing across this. So what happens? Well, what happens if my video will play is shown here. Okay. So what's happening here, the bacteria are trapped on the bottom. But you can see they're getting longer in dividing and they fall off out into the media. The media is flowing down, so they keep trapped in there. And so you can watch them actually grow and divide in real time, very quickly. This is actually a YouTube video that I think is on a 45-minute loop with music behind it if you want to watch it. But, but it shows pretty clearly what's happening in here. So what they've done is they created these microfluidic channels. You have one that is your control, your reference, and the other is the treatment. They are putting antibiotic on the treatment one and nothing on the other. And then they use a microscope and measure 
how fast the bacteria are growing. So they can do this incredibly quickly and actually watch this. And what this looks like is shown here. So here's the reference, and this is the growth rate, how fast it's growing. And it's growing at a certain rate, probably around 20 minute doubling time. And that stays constant in the experiment. But the other one that they treated with antibiotic quickly grows at a slower and slower rate. So within, in this experiment, you can clearly see that within five minutes, you can see a huge difference. They tried this with a number of different antibiotics and shown here. Uh, I'm not going to go through all of these, but you can see that in most cases, you can find out which antibiotic is effective against this infection in less than 30 minutes. So this device is being produced now and is being tested in doctor's offices. And my guess is it will, if it works as well as advertised, it will be available very soon. The last uh, approach to diagnostics I want to mention, uh, this was a group in the U.S. at Caltech that created a test that looked, again, this is the 30-minute dream. They're all, all advertising for 30 minutes. That works on a slightly different premise. Here you have the sample, and you have no antibiotic or antibiotic. And what they do is they let the cells grow for a short time. Let's say, I don't remember, uh, 15 minutes. And then separate the bacteria onto a chip and label the DNA. The, or they're labeling the DNA during the growth. What you should find is cells that have are growing, are making DNA. You get more DNA. Cells that are inhibited by the antibiotic aren't growing. They have less DNA. And as shown here, the reference, most of the individual cells are labeled, but here very few are, indicating the antibiotic is working. 